Hello friends. Today we are going to do chapter number 14. The eyes have eight. Written by Ruskin Bond. Title. The title The eyes have eight tells us a lot. The narrator of the story was a blind man who met the girl while traveling to Dheradun. Both the girl and the narrator tried to hide their blindness. The boy wanted to see the girl and the girl wanted to see the beauty of nature. But both of them could not see. The whole story is related to eyes and vision. So the title is appropriate. Theme the main themes of the story are kindness, independent nature and desire. The prominent theme in the story is desire because both persons are still blind but they pretend as they are full sighted. Another theme is independent nature of both the characters as both are blind both are traveling alone. Kindness is reflected through their conversations as they both are strangers to each other but still talk like they knew each other for years. Character sketch of narrator. Main character. Traveling to Dheradun alone. Blind. Romantic tries to strike a conversation with the pretty girl. Loves to talk and wants to know more about people by questioning them about their lives. Second, the girl, co-passenger of the narrator. Pretty and interesting. Blind, confident. Third is the fellow passenger. He is the passenger who helps the author realize that the girl he was traveling with was blind just like him. Irony. The story is ironical right from the beginning. At the beginning, though the girl's mother advised her to avoid talking to strangers, she had a conversation with the narrator. The narrator described Masuri and the landscape outside despite his blindness which a sighted person failed to do making it ironical. The narrator was happy not to be revealed of his blindness by a girl but it is ironical that he was also dubbed by a blind girl. Lastly, in an ironical way, the story is narrated through the eyes of the blind narrator. Friends, now it's time to learn the long question answers of chapter number 14, The Eyes Have It. Question number 1. Why and how did the narrator try to hide his blindness from the girl? Also comment on the ironical twist at the end of the story. Answer The narrator of the story, The Eyes Have It, was a blind man. He was going to Masuri, a girl got into his compartment. He was very much anxious to hide his blindness from the girl. For this purpose, he began to converse freely and casually with her as if he had a normal eyesight. The narrator wanted to keep his blindness a secret because he was probably embarrassed by his condition. He may also have assumed that if his blindness is revealed, the girl would not have taken interest in talking to him and would have rather 
pitied him. The enchanting voice of the girl had mocked him. He imagined her looks. He spoke and behaved in a manner that she could not understand his blindness. He moved to the window and pretended to look out of the train. He then went to describe the outside scenery in a way that a person from a moving train can see. He pretended to see her face and described her as interesting. This gave the girl the idea that the man could see. The end of the story has an interesting ironical twist. It is only after the young woman has left that the narrator discusses that she too was blind. Every effort that the narrator had made to hide his own blindness had been in vain. The young woman would not have known that he was blind regardless of the narrator's action. Also, when the new passenger started suggesting that the girl was beautiful, he stuck to his own opinion that she had an interesting face. Though ironical, he was not able to see her face. Second long question answer is The true soldier fights not because he hates what is in front of him but because he loves what is behind him. Comment on the statement with reference to the poem The Charge of the Light Brigade. Answer The Charge of Light Brigade issues a clear call to celebrate the heroism of soldiers who surrendered themselves to a greater course. Throughout the poem, Tennyson calls attention to their valor, technical skill and willingness to trust in their leaders. The soldiers of the Light Brigade, knowing that their lives are in danger, nevertheless follow orders and charge the enemy gems. Tennyson says through the poem that the willingness of the cavalry to sacrifice themselves without calling their orders into question makes them hers. The poem thus suggests that heroism isn't just about bravery but also about duty being willing to obey the orders at any cost. The poet suggests that the cavalry knows that their charge is doomed before they even start, but they do it anyway. But none of them soldiers are frightened or discouraged. It's not their job to come up with orders, but to execute them. There's not to make reply, there's not to reason why, there's but to do and die. The poet through the poem celebrates the bravery of the cavalry men, their willingness into a terrifying and horrifying battle. He also promises their obedience and commitment to military hierarchy their willingness to execute an order even if they know it's a blunder. They still enter the jaws of death for the honor and pride of their country. The poem thus applauses the bravery of the light brigade who fight for their country and do not care about the powerful enemy ahead them. Thank you friends. Bye-bye.